probably could call it a ritual. Each morning, I go into my study and I open the shade from the front window. And the room that I'm in is filled with sunlight. The sun comes over the horizon, over the tree line, and fills that room with light and with warmth. For me, that's a new beginning. It's the beginning of a new day, and it's an experience of new life. And it's in that experience of new life in the sun that I have my morning time for prayer and meditation. Today, I wanna to talk about new life. And as I do, I wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. It's springtime right now in the Northern Hemisphere. And outside of that same front window that I, where I sit in the morning, there's a cherry tree that's in full bloom and the blossoms are being pollinated by our bees from the backyard from where we have a beehive. In my neighborhood, there's dogwood and azaleas bringing all kinds of color back into the neighborhood. In other parts of the Northern Hemisphere, there are daffodils and tulips and irises and dandelions and many other things coming to bloom, bringing color and life again. We know that spring is that season of new life where we experience a renewal, a new beginning, and it gives us hope. It gives us a sense of imagination from the future. So it's no wonder that the great religious traditions of the world or at least the great traditions of the West have situated holidays that are significant about new life in springtime. For Jewish people, it's Passover. For Christians, it's Easter. And this year for Muslims, Ramadan and Eid al-Fitr all take place in spring. And it's in this season of hope and goodness and new life that the holidays of promise are, are celebrated. But it's hard for many people to, to relate to some of these religious images from and, and the holidays that are presented to us because of the dogma and the doctrine. I mean, believing that someone came back to life who was once dead, well, that scientifically doesn't work for us. And it's even more confusing if you think in terms of cycles of karma and, and reincarnation and, and rebirth in that way. But if we look in our lives, we'll see around us, we'll see within us that those cycles of life and rebirth are already present. And I think that it's in becoming more aware of them and recognizing them that we're able to honor the sense of life that we carry with us. I have another ritual. At the end of the day, before I go to sleep, I say a monastic prayer. It's, it's called Compline or Night Prayer. And one verse in Compline is, into your hands I commend my spirit. These are the words of Jesus spoken from the cross before he dies. For me, it's not so much about recalling the death of Jesus, but it's about where I am in that moment, in that day, that at the end of the day, a day that's probably been marked by some joyful experiences and some, some good things, some challenges and stresses, and probably a whole lot of routine and monotony, I'm able to pause and say, here, I commend my life and what has been and I can return that to the source of life. And it's with that that I lay back in my bed and let go and allow myself to sleep. It's a letting go, what some writers refer to as sort of a, a mini kind of death, that we let go of our lives in order to sleep. We let go of our awareness to go into that place of slumber. And I go there comforted, knowing that I have let go of whatever the day has been. Into your hands I commend my spirit. But then I come back in the morning and experience that newness of life as I open the shades and experience that new sunlight. 
and it warms and radiates me. You know, the ancients understood these cycles and their importance. Before there were our modern religions, the people at Stonehenge, the people who built the city of Petra, the Incans who built the Temple of the Sun, and so many other people knew the importance of observing the sun and the stars and their movement and the cycles and the seasons. They observed the winter solstice and the summer solstice, and they knew the importance of light and darkness, life and death and renewal. And so they built monuments to these things, to mark these things, to celebrate them, because they're part of our life. They remind us that our lives are cycles. Our lives move through our birth and our life, our death, and then move into another new life. That's part of what's important about the cycle of life and death to realize that we're on a spectrum here, that, that it's not just an isolated event that we experience, but that there is a movement that happens for all of us. And as we embrace that movement, we embrace more and more the fullness of life. And it's with this that I, I invite you to celebrate the spring religious holidays with a different kind of vision, recognizing the signs of life and death and new life, where you are in life, where you are at this moment, where you can touch and feel and encounter them. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and be sure to leave some comments. And thank you for the time you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.